It's R4 and today we're kind of going to go over how to install the Hass Online trading software from start to finish on a Ubuntu Linux VPS. And the reason for this is there seems to be a lot of confusion on how to do it and a lot of different guides on the forums that kind of, they're hard to follow. So I figured why not just make a video, let's make it super simple um, and just go from there. Obviously this is a very simple installation video. Um, Later on, I will cover how to kind of secure your VPS a bit more. There are some limitations though, but for now, let's just get it up and running. That way you can utilize the software. So the first thing you need to do, or the first thing we need to say is, I'm expecting you to already have some software installed. So for the two pieces of software we need installed, it's PuTTY and FileZilla. I will link those things in the description so you can download and have them installed. The next thing obviously is you need to have a Hass Online license. Whether it be beginner, simple, advanced, professional, you need to have it installed, or you need to have it. Um, and finally, uh, you already bought a VPS from a provider and it's running 16.04 or 14.04. These instructions are specifically for 16.04, but they should work for 14.04 also. So basically what will happen is once you buy your VPS, you'll be given an email with some information. And from that email, there's really only a couple things we need. We need the IP address, uh, the public IP address for the VPS, so what we'll use to connect to it, the username and the password. And then every now and then, certain VPS providers will have a specific port number to connect to. In this case, it's 22, which is the default port, but some other ones might have different numbers. So just keep in mind, if your connection fails, just look to see if there's a specific port number. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go ahead and run PuTTY and it looks like a lot of things are here, a little bit complicated, but really all you really need to care about is the host name. So, or in this case, the IP address, make sure that this SSH little, uh, I guess, bullet point is clicked and the port number and change this to whatever port your email says. But in our case, it's default. So we'll go ahead and connect to it. Let me make this bigger so it's easier to see on the video. <clears throat> So you're going to get a prompt when you first connect to your server and it's going to say, hey, do you want to accept, you know, the signature that's associated with the host name's key? Just hit yes. Um, it happens every time you make an initial connection. So don't worry too much. And now we're at our login prompt. So we're going to go ahead and log in with our credentials and we're going to clear the screen to make it pretty. So just type in clear and hit enter and it'll kind of get rid of everything but the prompt. So the first thing you always want to do when you get a new VPS is you want to update and upgrade it. That'll just make sure that you have the latest packages and any security issues that were or originally there are fixed, right? So first thing you want to do is run sudo app get update. And what this is doing is sudo is just saying run this has, I guess, the equivalent of administrator in Windows, and we want to update our package list. So go ahead and type in our password there. <clears throat> and for me, it's really quick because I've already done this to make the video a bit shorter, but you might see a lot of uh, gets with numbers and stuff. Don't worry, just give it a little bit and it'll finish. So let's type clear again. The next thing we want to do is we want to run the upgrade command. And the upgrade command is actually going to install the newest packages. So sudo app get upgrade. And if you're curious what app get is, it's just our package manager and upgrade just the command we're giving it, right? So we go ahead, run sudo app get upgrade. I've already done it, like I said, to make because it might take a little bit. Um, but what will happen is you'll get a bunch of packages and it'll ask you if you want it to install and continue. Um, all you have to do is hit the letter Y and hit enter and it will go ahead and do that. Once that's done, you're going to want to reboot your machine. So just do sudo reboot now. If that doesn't work, you can also run sudo power off, whichever one works uh, to get yourself um, restarted. Once that's done, go ahead and reconnect with PuTTY and let's begin. So. After we're fully updated, we need to install the Mono package. So Hass Online is written in C Sharp, which is a language on top of the .NET framework on Windows. And that's why, for the most part, you don't have to do anything special but install the trading bot software. But on Linux, we don't have the .NET framework. We need to install an equivalent of it, which in this case is the Mono project. So if you go ahead and open up a web browser and navigate to the mono-project.com, site and you hit download then Linux, you'll be given these options, 16.04, 14.04, and 12.04. Like I said, this tutorial is focusing on, on 16.04, but 14.04 and 12.04 should work, but just to be safe, run either one of these. So what we need to do is we need to get copy these, these lines into our terminal here, and what that'll do is it'll install the well, let's just walk through it. So the first line, what the first line is going to do is, so just double click, right click, copy, 
and then inside here just hit right click and it'll go ahead and paste it in and press enter what this is doing is actually getting the keys uh, the public key information for the repository just you know just a security measure to make sure you have the right thing then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the next line and what the next line is doing is it's going to add the mono repository to our VPS sources list if that sounds like complete uh, gibberish to you don't worry all that's saying is we're adding the location of the mono files <clears throat> to our system so it knows how to get them Finally, what we're going to want to do is copy over this line. And we've already run it before, but because we just added a new package, we have to run it again, which is sudo apt get update to get the new sources. After that, what we're going to want to do is go ahead and install Mono. Um, basically, we're going to install the complete package of Mono. That means everything it has to offer. Pass Online uses a lot of different things, and it's just easier to have everything than it is to try to pick everything that's necessary. So sudo apt get install. And then we're just going to run mono complete. There we go. So what this is saying is administrator, use the package manager to install the mono complete package. Hit enter. And then you'll see that wall of text again. And do you want to continue? Just type in a Y, hit enter. And we're going to go ahead and start downloading and installing this. Um, this might take a little bit. So let's talk about the next step. So after while this is running, um, navigate over to your Hass Online account and go ahead and click my account login hit downloads and then click the download button here so it'll say like whatever license version you have whether it be simple uh, beginner advanced whatever it is just hit download and it'll go ahead and download the package so this is almost done running so let's get those two other things out of the way and once we're done with this we can continue this might take a bit of time, depending on what type of VPS you bought, or if you're on a dedicated server, what its specifications are. This can take anywhere from a minute or two to five to 10 minutes. And really, that's just because of the read and write speed of the disk. But regardless, you'll get it installed, and we're good to go. So the next step is, is we actually want to go ahead and go to our downloads folder where we downloaded our all platforms, and we want to unzip it. So I'm using 7-zip, but you can use WinZip. Whatever you have on your machine, just double click or hit extract. Okay. So now you'll have this all platforms and you'll have some things. So you have the Windows installer, the Linux tar, the OS X32, and a readme. Uh, the Linux32 tar is what we care about. So let's keep this off to the side. And the next thing we want to do is open up FileZilla. So we open up FileZilla and we're going to give this, this screen, it looks like a lot of mess, but all we're going to do is we're going to do um, up here in host, put our IP address, put our username and our password and the port. What this is going to do is it's, a, it's going to initialize an SFTP um, connection, which is just a secure FTP over SSH. If you're wondering what SSH is, it's how we're connecting to the machine right now. It's a protocol. So go ahead and click quick connect and what you'll see is you'll have this slash home and then a word it could be demo it could be whatever your home folders name is it could be gibberish for all, all we know but just know that under home there will be a folder and that's where you want to copy the file so how do we do that it's pretty simple we just let's make this a little easier see hold down on the linux 32.tar drag it over and just put it on top of the word and there you go so the transfer will take however long it takes depending on the speed and how far away you are for me it's instant because it's on the local network but once that's done come back here we're done with filezilla and that hit ls and you'll see that it is indeed there great so what we want to do now is we want to make a folder so mkdir which means make directory or make folder and we're going to make one called pos okay so let's do another ls to make sure it's there and as you can see in blue right here we have a folder called Haas next we want to do is we want to move the Linux 32.tar.gz into the Haas folder so to do that we just do move Linux 32.tar.gz and then go ahead and type Haas slash once that's done we're gonna go ahead and clear and CD into Haas so CD means move into that directory you're learning some Linux commands here so don't worry too much so we're gonna CD into the Haas directory ls and then what we need to do is we actually have to untar it which is the equivalent of it's it's another compression method like zip um, pretty simple just do tar xf and then type in linux32.tar.gz hit enter 
and then hit ls. And as you'll see, now we have the beta update, hotspot, and update. So the first thing we want to do, as always, is we want to run the beta update. Uh, the reason we want to run the beta is there's a lot of fixes that are going in before official releases. Um, and it's just kind of nice to have those fixes moving forward. Obviously, that means that we might have some different issues with some of the new features being in, being um, shown. But, you know, anything, we kind of help the developers. We like the software. So let's go ahead, run dot slash beta update dot sh. So dot slash means in Linux land to run XYZ. So in this case, we're going to run the beta update dot sh script. So we run it. And as you can see, it's going to do a lot of this. So these pluses just mean we're showing showing us what commands are being ran, and then it's actually going to execute. So it's in, in the instance checkup, the cleaning old update files, etc. So the next thing we're going to want to do is we actually got to run the bot to get the folder structure created. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to run it, and it's not going to work because we need to configure some some settings. But let's just get it running. Running. So sudo dot slash hotspot dot sh. Okay. Now it ran. So we need to kill it uh, because it's not going to be working correctly. And the easiest way to click kill it is just sudo kill all mono. And what that's going to say is kill every mono process running. Obviously, if you're running a lot of stuff on your Linux machine or on your VPS with mono, you don't want to run this. But in this case, we know the only thing running is the Haas software. So go ahead and type um, press enter, hit clear. And then just to make our life easy, we need to remove the exe lock file which just kind of makes sure is that no additional exes run at the time since we're hard killing it we have to remove it manually so just do rm slash temp hts.exe.lock and we're actually gonna have to run sudo so sudo rm slash temp hts exe lock should be the only time we have to do that so now what we want to do is we want to do cd and tilde. That'll take us to our home directory. Hit ls. And now you'll see we have three folders. We have Haas, which is where our software is stored. HTS, which is where the settings and additional information is going to be stored. And library, which will be um, some additional logs. But what we care about is what is in HTS. So we're going to go ahead and type clear and click cd HTS. Hit ls, enter. And where we need to go is we actually need to go into the settings folder. So CD settings, let's hit clear and LS. Now we're going to see the main, the one we're care, we care about is main settings.xml. Well, how do we edit the file? So what we got to do is we have to do nano main settings.xml. Hit enter. And now we're going to take it to this screen. Don't worry, it's a lot simpler than it looks. All we gotta do is scroll down using the arrow keys and we're gonna see this hosting address. Or in that, or first off, what we need to do is we need to disable something else. So you'll see right here, you see where it says open interface on startup? We need to set this to false. Um, the reason we gotta set this to false is because by default, the Haas software tries to open up a web browser and since there is no web browser um, present, it's gonna fail. Oh, okay, hold on. So what you're seeing here is remember when we ran the hotspot software has root? Well, we don't have permission to edit this file. So hit control and X, hit no. And then what we need to do is we need to go back in sudo main settings.xml. Now we should be able to um, now we should be able to edit the file. So on open interface on startup, go ahead and hit type, go navigate to this area with the arrow keys and backspace and hit false. And the reason we need to do that, like I said, is by default, the Haas software tries to open up a web browser. Um, the problem with that is, is that we're on a VPS and on what's called a headless server and it doesn't have a GUI or a web browser. And because of that, when it tries to do this, it fails and then the software never comes online. And that's a, that's something that's always, usually, always missed in most of the forum posts is that this needs to be disabled if you're running it on a VPS. The next thing we need to do is we need to go to the hosting address and put in the IP that you're using to connect to it. So in this case, I'm put using 10.0 dot 211 this is whatever ip you use to um, connect to it over putty through a filezilla etc after that's done just hit control and the letter o hit enter and it's saved so now hit control x and you're you're fine so now what you need to do is you need to hit clear cd to cd and tilde hit ls go to the haas folder cd haas 
hit ls, and a sudo dot slash hotspot dot sh. Okay, so in theory, we should be running. We can verify if we're running by doing a quick check to see what mono processes are running. So just do ps dash a, so ps means process, give me a process list. Do a, God, I don't even know what those are called at this point. Do a long bar <laughs> and do grep, which means search and mono. As you can see, we do have a mono process running right here. So um, we're pretty much ready to go. So how do we know if it's running? Let's go ahead and open up a web browser. I'm doing this on the side in case you're wondering. So if it fails, I'm not too embarrassed. And navigate to 10.0.0.2.1.1.80.90 or your IP 80.90. And once you load in, you should see welcome to the Haas online trade server. After that, enter your license information, set up your login, do your pick your price sources and hit complete. Please, please, please make sure to enable two factor authentication if this is as far as you're going. It's not going to save you from everything, but it should at least hopefully add a little bit of extra difficulty for an attacker. In the next video, we'll definitely cover some ways to, uh, I guess, help reinforce the security of the VPS. This is a very basic install to get you going. Highly recommend if you just have this has the the setup that, um, I guess, just watch the next video, get it a bit more secure. Nothing's foolproof, but right now, make sure if you're using just this that you have two-factor authentication enabled. That way, even if someone does find a way to get your credentials or does get your credentials, um, they still don't have the two-factor authentication token. But other than that, I hope this tutorial was easy to follow and not complete garbage. Until um, next time.